I'm doing it because this is what I'm good at coding, but I usually don't enjoy that much digital car games. They want to support the game, but they don't know how to support it and they have to wait. Such situation, all the money goes to either marketing or polishing and improving and building up. If Ravensburger contacts you about this and they want you to take it down as uh, the creator, because you always have to go first because you program it that way, right? There is a line of code that I change every week and a uh, different player gets to be always first. Is, is that too much for one person to create in, in Pixel Mart? Because I'm doing this in my free time and I'm trying not to burn out. Have you had any contact with Ravensburger ever since you made Pixelborn at all? My theory is that Ravensburger got some limit. I, I tried to um, make it non-oppressive uh, or like make you feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Don't play Pixelborn. Yeah, how's it going everyone? My name is Earl Meister and this is the Lore Meisters Podcast. For today's guest, we have a legend in the Lorcana community, Pavel Kolev, the creator of Pixelborn. For those of you who don't know what Pixelborn is, Pixelborn is a fan-made app for PC and mobile where you can play and test your deck ideas for Disney Lorcana. Now, let's get to know Pavel. Pavel lives in Bulgaria, a small country in Eastern Europe. He's been working in the game industry for the past seven years. And before that, he has worked for some big IT companies. He has been a part of a small team that won a NASA Space Apps Challenge the largest hackathon by that time, not only once, but twice during 2013 and 2014. Pavel has played some card games as a teenager, but nothing serious at the time. His first real involvement with a card game was 10 years ago when he got into Game of Thrones LCG, and he has been obsessed with card games ever since. To a point, it became a central point in his life. He has played mostly digital card games, no matter how small, but not so many different TCGs since most TCGs have little to none distribution at all in Bulgaria. He has participated as well in a couple of international tournaments for Game of Thrones, with the highest achievement being crowned as the best Martel player at Stalag Germany 2017, which is the largest event for this game, and has some top finishes on the side events as well over the years. He also has played some Flesh and Blood, where he plays as one of the top in some local high-end tournaments. At the moment, he is very focused on Disney Lorcana and a little bit of Grand Archive TCG. He is also looking forward to playing with some other upcoming TCGs next year, including Altered TCG and Star Wars Unlimited. Back when Lorcana was starting to get announced, about one hour after IGN posted an article about Disney Lorcana, Pavel saw it, and at that very moment, he felt that this game would be very special, and he immediately started to hype the people around him even before they revealed the D23 card. He really wanted to get involved in the community, but he knew he couldn't stream nor make videos for it for various reasons. So he decided to go on the route he was really good at, coding. At one point last year, when he had some free time, he thought he could build a tool for the community where they can test decks for Lurkana and did his best to make it visually pleasing. And soon enough, it got out of scope. How's it going, uh, Pavel? Um, that was a, a crazy intro. Um, I can't believe uh, the experience that you've had with uh, developing and programming uh, in general. That is very, very, very impressive. And I'm, 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 it makes me wonder, like, why card games? Like, you have so much talent. <laughs> why card games? <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, um, first thing I wanted to ask is uh, I, I, I'm a traveler. I, I like to go to different places. Uh, you know, this is the third con continent that uh, I've been uh, uh, living in. And I, I, I'm wondering, what is Bul Bulgaria like? Oh, <laughs> Well, good first question, but uh, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm really honored to talk with you because, yeah, I'm not uh, invited to podcasts or interviews that often, and it's uh, very exciting to me for me whenever I get a chance to talk with someone, and uh, I really enjoy your streams and everything that you're doing for the community, and you will only grow bigger than uh where you are at the moment so you're doing great stuff continue doing it yeah thank you well i am super excited to have you here <laughs> i have so many questions yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well on the first one bulgaria is relatively small country uh it's a shrinking nation um it's a 
relatively poor country uh, with focus on um, IT and software development. That's like a big chunk of uh, what the young people from Bulgaria are doing. So all those intellectual kind of stuff are kind of weird, kind of like a mini Asia here, like. Kind of I, I feel you on that. <laughs> yeah. Philippines is exactly the the same way, and 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 it saddens me sometimes that um, it's 2024 and they still yeah. consider Philippines as a third world country. And I hope someday that would change. You know, um, yeah, I can totally feel you on that. Well, I'm gonna ask a little more questions about Bulgaria because I'm really really um, uh, curious. Um, about places in the, in general, I like visiting places. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, what kind of food do you guys uh, eat there? Is it more like Mediterranean? Do you guys eat like, um, yeah? What what kind of food do you guys eat? Well, everything because because uh, the location of Bulgaria is quite specific. We are just in the entrance of Europe, between Asia and between the Mediterranean, and we have some other Slavic countries around us so we have everything we have mediterranean we have asian cuisine we have uh more spicy food we have basically a mixture of everything if you go to a restaurant in bulgaria uh any restaurant will serve you anything from pizza to beef steak to pasta to whatever you want like we have it all in in any restaurant we rarely have specialized restaurants where where you can just go and eat a meal like a beef or something like that yeah all the restaurants have uh, have everything nice uh I, i'm a big fan of street foods do you guys have a lot of street yeah. foods there yeah yeah absolutely yeah like like uh, stalls and, again, and stuff yeah yeah again mixed everything Nice. You, nice. You, you you can go on a place and get the chicken fillet and uh, pasta and lasagna and everything. Like if if you are a cook in a restaurant here, you have to be able to cook everything basically. Oh wow. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, um uh, also um uh, from the intro uh, the 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 viewers have uh, heard it uh, probably by now that um it's it's it sucks that um there's some TCGs that don't make it there um, because of distribution stuff, right? Yeah. And um, as, like I, what I said, same thing happens in uh, uh, in Philippines. There are some TCGs that uh, doesn't make it there. I, I believe I'm one, almost 100% that Lurkana is not there. And yeah. I've had uh, friends um, who watch my videos and uh, stream. They're like, we're so jealous. Because you're opening these packs, we want to get our hands on these packs, and and, and also, the, like another sad part too is that they make less money uh, there. Um, so it's like ten eight pounds a day that they make, and this is working for like eight to ten hours, and that's ridiculous, right? And to buy a pack, that's five five pounds or five dollars, that's half of what they make in a day. You know, so yeah. it, it's a, it's a big deal for them when they when they get their hands on it. Um, most likely, they will buy like singles and stuff. But yeah, um, that's pretty sad to hear. Um, because uh, I know you like uh card games, and that that must have sucked growing up, and you want to get your hands on the cards, but you can't. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. But yeah. Some of the majors, major ones, we, we have them, they reach our country, but it's not uh, just Bulgaria. Many countries around uh, Bulgaria, including Greece, Serbia, they are in a similar situation where they don't get all the card games. Yeah. And it's not like in the US where uh, uh, Jason States gets all the products or uh, the distribution is in the whole US, I think. Yeah. Uh, in Europe, although the countries are really close to each other, we don't get the distribution. We are part of the European Union and stuff like that, but we only get like the major card games. And yeah. if we want something more uh, spicy, let's call it, we need to find a way and get it, order it online from some uh, stores abroad. Or, That's got to like cost I extra, for, right? Yeah. And yeah. the thing I do for Workana is I travel to the UK, uh, get as much cards as I can and bring them back to Bulgaria and then give them out to people. They order it. Uh, and yeah, basically that's the, I'm the, 
Wait, so it's that not is, there. Yeah. It's not no, no, in no, Bulgaria. No, no, no. Oh my god. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like you, you would so, like think now. I, I, I don't know why. Like uh, I'm, I'm in this like I, I, in my head, um, and I'm, I'm wrong in so many ways. It's 2024. I think that like I, or I feel like everything should be international by now, right? Yeah, no, I think they announced uh, 10 more additional countries, that, like they're adding uh, Italy and Czech and uh, some other countries, but uh, Italy doesn't even have Bulgaria. it? No, no. Oh, uh, Italy, are, they're starting with set three. So at okay. the moment, there are only 10 countries in the world where Workana is distributed uh, officially. Mm. So okay. yeah, uh, m big parts of Europe are still don't have it and um and this is why i think as spicy as this uh topic will get this is why i think that pixel born is fucking awesome excuse my language i'm gonna beep that on the, on the thing but like pixel born is, is 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 really cool you know uh and and there's gonna be some questions that, that i'm gonna have with that uh regarding like the the connection with it with the ravensburger but like uh it, it, it it's it, it, it's fan made and um um you putting all your time into this is is amazing because a lot of people don't get their hands on the cards like what you said and they want to play the game they want to support the game but they don't know how to support it and they have to wait but sometimes you know and you can call it fear of missing out or it's maybe just like super excitement they want to get involved and can you really blame them like i would i would be in the same place if if i wasn't in 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 uh uk or didn't didn't live in uh uh, uh us um i would be in the same place where whenever games comes out um whenever whenever um these cool things comes out and i can't participate that that's just so sad because because it's not like it used to before where the countries or where you live keep to themselves and it's very minimal that you get some stuff from other countries like uh, back then it's uh hollywood movies that we get you know music would reach your country but now everything reaches your country because of the internet yeah. so everything yeah. that's yeah. trending is, is there and you you wanting to experience that and not getting to experience that just sucks it just sucks yeah yeah but uh there's no other way to say it i i, I could use uh, other uh, yeah. uh bad words but like i i well, can't use it obviously yeah. here <laughs> it, it, it's strange uh, there's another example with disney plus uh we know that all the movies are translated in bulgarian with the voiceovers but for example for disney plus we don't have that so i cannot watch disney movies on disney plus in bulgarian with my kids they don't know english so they cannot watch basically the movies. We we pay for Disney Plus, and there is no content in Bulgarian there. Although uh, we can see that, uh, for example, national national television or some other other TVs have that content in Bulgaria. Why is that no n not on Disney Plus? I don't know. And yeah. that's another reason it's hard for me to uh, get my kids involved with uh, Disney the whole Disney franchise because it's hard to find the content in Bulgarian and they're quite young yet and uh, no, they don't understand the English so they cannot watch and enjoy the movies. Yeah, so I feel strange. I feel you on that because uh, yeah. I, I had 15 years in Philippines and yeah. um, a lot of the movies or, or the shows they're n not translated in uh, in Tagalog yeah. at all. That's our main language in Philippines. It's yeah. not in Tagalog. We are lucky though that uh, a lot of the animes that we watch growing up was translated into uh, yeah. t t Tagalog. But but yeah, I I, I totally feel you uh, on that. And and um, I, I I really don't know the reason. There's got to be like a business thing, you know? Do we make enough money yeah. from this country, or do we make enough yeah. money from uh, this type of viewers? Is that is there enough viewership that we have to invest this money? But in my head, how expensive it is, it, or is it to get a translate translator for a movie? You know, when you're making yeah. millions of dollars, right? Uh, well, <laughs> movies are one thing, but for Workana specifically, I was. Uh, thinking the same way, like how hard 
could it be to bring it worldwide? And then I, uh, when I talk to people, I realize that every country has a specific uh, restrictions or oh, okay. uh, IP um, infringements. Like, uh, for example, uh, Italy is a good example, or Europe as a whole. We don't have Moana in Europe. It's called Vaiana because there is some IP in Italy or some actress in Italy that is called Moana and they cannot use that name. And uh, same for Dumbo or some other characters. So every country yeah. has a specific IP restrictions. So I think this is one of the, they have to print different cards with different names for that country. So I think that's one of the main, re main reasons they haven't made a worldwide release or haven't added all those country because they have to work uh, country by country and solve those IP issues and print. So uh, for Bulgaria, for example, if they have a, 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 some infringement with some IP, uh, they need to print, uh, to make additional print run only for Bulgaria and it has to uh, be in enough volume to make sense for them. But then Bulgaria is a small market and yeah. at the end of the day, we might never get Workana because we cannot sell like 10,000 boxes in Bulgaria. There is not that much uh, players, TCG players in Bulgaria. And if there is some issue with the printing like that, IP issues, then we'll never get it. And I'm sure that's valid for other smaller countries as well. And maybe yeah. it's valid for the Philippines as well. So you never know. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and, and it's cool that you explain that because uh, I was uh, hanging out with my wife and we're, we're, we're cruising through uh, Disney Plus. And I'm like, let's go watch Zootopia because uh, when, when uh, um, set two came out, popsicles you know and all these cards yeah. from zootopia it was really cool and i'm like it's been like what like uh three four maybe five years since the last time uh we've watched uh zootopia i want to refresh my memory when it when it comes yeah. to uh the show and uh i was giving my wife uh some crap i was uh, uh, uh teasing her because uh she she's basically scottish because I, I know yes. she's filipino but um she grew up here she moved here when she was six and she lived here her whole life and i'm like why do uh i call i call the people here ukanians um because <laughs> like i just put every, all of them together i'm like why do yeah. ukanians like to change words i'm like why is zootopia called uh, uh zootropolis in uh yeah. in uh uk and and i think that explained it what you just said when it comes to like ip yeah. in, uh, infringements and and uh, all that so that's cool i'm gonna definitely mention that to her um afterwards because yeah. i was teasing her about it um yeah so i was gonna ask uh you have you have this knowledge with coding you can probably make any card game um, uh, that you can if you really, really want to uh, and put your time on it. Will you be making apps as well for for other other um, titles? Like, will you make fan-made apps for other other titles in the future, that uh, TCGs that's coming out that doesn't have it yet or will never have it? Is that something that you would be interested on uh, doing? Or right now it's just fully Lurkana that you're, you're, you're super focused on? Well, yeah, at the moment it's just Workana, but I'm already thinking about other titles and I have done some stuff that are not yet public some for some other titles, but I would really love to, to do as many titles as, as possible, but uh, I'm just still trying to figure out the right balance between my free time, my family, my involvement in uh, the Pixelborn project and the schedule of releasing new cards and how much time that takes me because I don't want to start another TCG and uh, uh, in the middle of it realize that I don't have enough time to code the new expansion for that TCG and then leave it behind. Yeah. So that will really suck for the people playing it. Exactly. And that's, that's the main reason for not uh, adding another game yet. It's just because for me, it's commitment. If I decide to launch it, it will be something long-term where I'm long-term involved and commit to support it, yeah. uh, fixing issues, adding all the new cards and stuff like that. 
So it's not just uh, make it and publish it. It it, it requires uh, long-term support, as we are seeing with uh, Workana with the release of every couple of months new cards. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, I I totally uh, get you on that, and I was uh, I was just gonna add since it's not um, monetized, you can't really hire a whole team to to do that stuff uh, for you, you know, and that would I yeah. would be too expensive to pull it out of your pocket and have like ten people like hey. New expansion is coming out. We gotta cover this uh, as a, as a one man project. I think that's enough. I I I can't even imagine how you do it for Pixelborn, because <laughs> I think it's so much uh, so much work already, right? Um, uh, for that, um, uh, you don't have to question. Uh, I mean, you don't have to answer this, but is would you tease what title you are working on in in the background, or is this like a complete super secret? Um, uh, well, uh, uh, there are actually two titles that I'm uh, updating the engine for, and one is uh, I, I I can say it's done. I haven't added the cards yet, and uh, that one uses the force. So that that's what I can say about it. Okay. Oh, that's exciting. That's super exciting. Yeah. That's super exciting. All right. Um, so I, I have done some of my homeworks. I have uh, read articles, both good and bad. And and I'm going to tell you right now, I've, I've, I, I'm sorry for like the bad articles that's been written uh, about uh, stuff with like F Pixelborn and about you. But like, uh, it's just that some website or some content cre creators, they just can't help it because like drama sells and it sucks. Yeah. And and this is like one of the things that I always avoid, and I have never done this in 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 uh my my channel because I always tell my my uh viewers that I I play games and I like to entertain. I don't want any drama, and and that is why we avoid political, religious, or any 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 type of uh talks in in uh my uh, uh, channel and I believe as well that positive content is something that we should strive for and I, I have watched so many um, uh, interviews with, with Mr. Beast and this is like one of the things that he always say is that positive uh, stuff is harder to sell but it's yeah. not impossible it's just people always take the easy way out so what I, where I'm getting at here is like uh, um, people like obviously accusing you of uh, stuff with, with, with uh, things but I read your statement before that if Ravensburger contacts you about this and they want you to take it down you are more than 100% willing to take it down right there and there right yeah. Like if they ever uh, do that. And I know that would suck uh, for you and for the community in general. And I hope that when they do that, they have something in replacement uh, already. Um, but uh, here's a spicy question. If Ravensburger asks you to work for them, to, to uh, make them the official Disney Lorcana game, would you do it? Uh, who wouldn't? I mean... Uh... It will be exciting challenge, and I will be happy to be part of it um, in whatever possible way I can help that happen. So, yeah, absolutely. Honestly, I, I will be interested in that. The way I think of it, and and I have talked to people about this in my stream. Uh, you made Pixel Warm by yourself. If there is five hundred thousand dollars, a million dollars, maybe more, since it's Disney, hopefully it's more that's given to you, Pavel, build us a team, build us a game. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be mind blowing. I'm, yeah. I'm excited yeah. for that. Well, I think that um, <coughs> for now the main, uh, like, the 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 groundwork is done. Uh, you can tell, and uh, it's only polishing, adding uh, VFX, adding sound effects and stuff like that to make it a more premium experience. So, yeah, uh, usually with in, in su such situation, uh, all the money goes to either marketing or polishing and improving and building up uh, on the visual to, to make things more visually pleasing. 
Yeah. And I'm soon adding other stuff to Pixelborn, like quests, achievements, and stuff like that. That will even that will make it even more feel like a, a real game. Uh, so yeah. Um, I like that. I like that because uh, <laughs> um, I I think that. Um, a lot of people might hate me for this, but it, it, it it's true. And a lot of people agreed with me as well with it. It's just that card game can only entertain you up to a certain uh, point. If you play it all the time, if you play it every day, and there's a lot of gamers that do, does that, right? They put three, five, eight hours a day of uh, gaming. Card game could get stale so fast yeah. if it's just flat. And and that is why I always think that the next next level. I mean, we all know we want Yu Gi Oh to happen in real life, where everything is in front of us, right? Yeah. Uh, stadiums um, uh, where we summon our, our actual uh, actual cards in the field. That 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 would be cool. Uh, I mean, that is the ultra megatonic stuff. But um, a more realistic um, step is for me um, is the animations, nice sound effects animations and like what you said just make it completely visually uh, uh appealing uh to the eye and i think that's like what makes it uh interesting because they don't just want to see a flat card like at the end of the yeah. day you know it can yeah. Yeah. it could Absolutely. get boring after a while and, and i said that on my my first episode here that i have played i have probably at least fifteen thousand, maybe twenty thousand hours now um on digital card games. I played pretty much every single title out there, yeah. two, 3,000 each um, uh, for, for every single one of them. And nothing can hold me down uh, in one title. And that's because like there was something missing and I felt like what's missing was the TCG part. Um, yeah. The physical part, going out, playing cards with with friends, you know, going to events. I think that's uh, that's what, what what's awesome. Cause uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think in uh, 2024, uh, physical TCG can exist without a, without some form of digital play. Like even if it's not official client, it will be on TTS or some fan made website that supports it in in some way. You cannot avoid that. And w what would you do if pandemic happens again? Yeah. Like. Flesh and Blood was released during the pandemic, and the only thing that saved the game was the digital play and the digital tournaments that were organized. Although the creators of Flesh and Blood want to keep the game physical, yeah, to because uh, it's a non-official but... one as well, right? It was a fan-made one yeah, too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But at the end of the day, that's what keeps player. Uh, players hyped, intrigued in the game uh, until they get to the next league night or the next tournament or whatever next there is. Yeah, that's very true because not everyone can... We, we all have lives. Uh, we have full-time yeah. jobs. You know, we, we have to do what we got to do. And um, I, I used to go three nights uh, a week, three, four nights a week on the LGSs around me. Now I go two nights, which is still a lot. Um, yes. compared to most people, because like, most people would go like once a month, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> and people are asking me, how come we don't see you on these days anymore? And I'm like, I'm falling behind with work. Like, I, I got to do uh, stuff still. And, and not every location allows me to uh, uh, stream because of uh, connection-wise. And I, I would like to just uh, always record as well, but it's also a hassle bringing my stuff every every day but uh every friday i at least try to uh irl uh stream because at the end of the day uh, and i'm sure you would agree uh with me on this that you would probably like to see um the physical version more than the, uh, any digital oh, version right ab absolutely i hate digital card games <laughs> yeah. i prefer the real play and uh that's why i don't one of the reasons I don't play that often on Pixelborn, I'm yeah, I'm doing it because this is what I'm good at coding, but I usually don't uh, enjoy that much digital car games. I really prefer the phys physical aspect of it, the the way you can talk with your opponent, the way you can 
uh, throw the table when you're angry and uh, uh, hit top deck or something like that. Yeah. So the, the, the live interaction uh, is something that the digital one will never replace. And yeah, that, that's what first brought me into card games. And it still gets me the excitement to go and uh, play against real people, friends, make new friends as well. And yeah, uh, it's, yeah both physical and digital uh, have their um, uh, advantages, pros, pros and, and cons. cons. And yep. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, at the end of the day, I prefer the physical. Yeah. There, there's nothing compares to seeing yeah. your opponent in real life, their pain, and while you torture them before you play yeah. Be Prepared at turn seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and their reaction, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The anxiety that's like, okay, it's turn six. What are you going to do? You got six mana le or six, six ink left. Yeah. You're not spending them, and you're just like, you know exactly what I have, but, but you actually didn't have it in your hand. You just want to torture yeah. them. <laughs> and, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, that's fine. And probably it's not fun playing a uh, uh, pixel born uh, as uh, the creator because you always have to go first because you program it that way, right? I'm yeah, just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had to. I had to say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There is, there is, there is a line of code that I change every week, and a different player gets to be always first. So yeah. Oh, that's just cool. Kidding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because there are weeks where I I, I go um I, I play like a hundred games and I go uh, first yeah. twice and I'm like, what is going on, Pavel? I I need to yeah. get him to 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 my podcast so I can get it on his good side so I get the first most of the weeks. <laughs> okay, okay. You have the next week. Okay. So make sure you play. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. I can finally climb. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I go to a lot of LGS, like what I said, and, um, people got excited when I said that I am going to go interview, um, the creator of, uh, Pixelborn. So I asked them, do you have any questions for, for him? Um, what, what, what would you ask if you were the one that's, uh, talking to Pavel right now? So I have a few questions that, um, I thought would be, uh, cool to ask. Um, n number one is, will there be an AI mode in, in uh, Pixelborn? Or is, is that too much for one person to create in, in Pixelborn? It's actually half done. Uh, so there are many things that are half done, but uh, it's because I'm doing this in my free time and I'm trying not to burn out. Uh, so I quite often uh, start to do stuff that excite me and usually put them on hold half half baked and then when i got the next chance i finished them so it was similar with the spectator mode uh, it was started in september because it was something that excited me but then more urgent matters came and i had to attend those so spectator was released in uh, in december so there are many things that are that i'm doing when I feel that I will burn out fixing bugs or adding new cards. So those things will slowly be introduced. And AI is one of those. And the way I'm doing it, it's I'm trying to do it properly, not to make it too dumb or too, uh, too good. Uh, so it will have like three levels uh, of AI against which you can play like one very hardcore one new friendly like a punching bag and one mid-level so that's that's how my approach there yeah. but uh yeah it's still not ready and i i i cannot commit to when it will be ready that's that's exciting though to uh no and honestly um i know you say you keep saying the the word uh slow i'm gonna be honest with you i played so many card games and the way you put out stuff is faster than any of these card games that have a whole freaking team on them. <laughs> I'm just going to say that right now. And I think a lot of people would agree with me. Who, people who actually plays uh, a lot of these uh, digital card games that um, I think they would all agree that, you know, some stuff are just like you would think that it should be there the next month or the next few weeks or it, this should be fixed in a, in like a, a a week but they're not you know yeah. um spectator mode for example some card games don't have that 
And I'm like, why? Like, <laughs> why don't well, why don't we have that? <laughs> well, I'm in a really good position here because I have the liberty to release something that might not work at the end of the day, and people will be more forgiving about it because they know that I'm a single developer. While if you're a big company, you want everything to be polished, 100% uh, working, no bugs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are always bugs at the end of the day, but uh, I think that uh, that's one of the main reasons that I can uh, add new stuff uh, that fast. Because, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't uh, have to be that responsible. If there is an issue, I can fix it in five minutes. Uh, like, it's yeah. not a big deal. While if you're a big company, then uh, you cannot fix things that quick. That makes sense because so, yeah. uh, com com companies would probably have to schedule a fix yeah. and then they would have yeah. to work on that. And if it gets solved, then they would have to work on when are we going to publish this? Where, when are we going to yeah. um, put this uh, hot fix or, 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 or patch, right? And yeah. also they have to answer to the man yeah. up yeah. there, right? Like, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing things fast just because I'm in the situation I'm in. If I was part of a big company, probably things would wouldn't work out that fast. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, I, I I get it, I get it. This is this is this is good. Like you know, I, I'm learning I'm learning new stuff um, <laughs> as we speak when it comes to this. Cause um, I'm not like the harshest like uh, critic when when it comes to that. Like I know I did sound like I was complaining about the, that. Cause I am, um, but that, that that's just normal complaints. But there are other people there that are super, super, super harsh when it comes to uh, yeah. this. And they would make a whole like video about it too. And that's that's gotta suck too for, for the game developer, right? Cause like, um, yeah. like, like what I mentioned, there is a man up here and then the man in between and then there are the game developers. And a lot of things needs to go through a lot of uh, stuff. And if it was just for the game developer, like yourself, um, yeah. I'm sure that, you could, if you if you wanted to, you could just change it like that. But it has to go yeah. through a lot of process first. Yeah, absolutely. And for a lot of things, like even even if you take, for example, some small button or new UI icon, that for in a big company that needs to go through UI designer, then UX designer, then get tons of approval, different versions, different iterations, and just one small icon can take up to one week of the whole team working on it. And then for me, it's just, okay, I have that icon. I'll just tune it a little bit, place it in it for five minutes. I have it ready. And yeah, it's, it's different. Yeah. And I know this uh, might sound uh, dumb, but it, 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 they probably have to go through HR as well. Like, right. Uh, <laughs> is this a sign safe? Will it offend anyone? You know, yeah, and all yeah. that nowadays. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Um, another, uh, question, will there be modes in, in, um, in pixel board? And by modes, I mean, like, uh, I myself enjoy playing draft, uh, and sealed as well. We were going to be going to that London, uh, event. I'm super excited yeah. to meet you in uh, person, by the way, and play, play some sealed events, yeah. uh, with some, yeah. uh, new cards. Will there be something like that in, uh, uh pixel born? Well, there is a fan made site website. Uh, actually it launched earlier this month where you can play act. Uh, the tournament organizer can generate the draft and you make your picks and same for sealed. And there were already two or three tournaments on Pixelborn that are draft and sealed. So that's oh, already there. Oh, that's yeah. cool. So it's not yeah. in Pixelborn, but because someone made it and it works, it, yeah. it works perfectly like that too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Cause yeah. like you, you get, you get the cards and then you get the code for Pixelborn and then you just yeah, ship it exactly. to Pixelborn and then play against yeah, each exactly. other. So it, uh, that's exactly. awesome. That's all. I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't know that. I got to yeah. find out the link to this site and I got to tell people cause a lot of people are uh, asking me about this. They want to try this out. Uh, I think it's randomize.ink or something like that. Yeah. Randomize.ink is the website. No, oh, right. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, definitely uh, uh, check that out. Okay, this one, um, you can and you, you don't have to uh, answer this one um, if, you, if you'd like. Um, have you had any contact with Ravensburger ever since you made um, 
pixelborn at all no no zero, I, zero I, I i tried to reach out and i tried to contact them and i i've said that uh, i think many times that i tried to contact them but uh it's radio silence i have not made any contact with any of them okay yeah um and there's a lot of thoughts that comes into my head um when it comes to this but it's just so hard to 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 think right they it probably has to go through a bunch of stuff before they can properly like respond to you as well when when it yeah, comes to and that. that's that's another thing like usually when people uh blame Ravensburger for some stuff like the production or the a lack of uh, OP announcement or whatever, uh, people usually forget that it's not just Ravensburger. Uh, I think that everything they do or announce, they have to go through Disney as well. So yeah. they cannot, they don't have the flexibility of being the sole owner of everything and the, the decision maker of everything. So yeah. in many cases, I have the feeling that's not, that's my just, a uh, theory, personal theory, that for many of their decisions, they have to go through Disney. I think you're uh, right, though. That takes time. That takes time. Yeah, I think you're right. Because, like, in the grand scheme of things, uh, um, yeah. as much as I want uh, Lorcana to be a super ultra megatonic focused yeah. by Disney, it's not. Because uh, it, yeah. it's the shows and the movies that makes the big box, and they would always uh, go for for the big box. Of course, everything else is just a way of promoting those big money makers. And um, Lorcana is one of those. It's a it's a great way to market the movies, the market m market the show, and it's a great way to please the the, the fans as well, who already is hooked into uh, the, the show. And yeah. I, and, and I really wish it's the other way around. <laughs> well. My theory, for example, for the biggest issue of Warcana last year, the uh, the production and the lack of product, is that my feeling and my theory is that Ravensburger uh, got some limit set by Disney for how much they can print and develop that game because it's not the first Disney TCG out there and all the previous ones have failed. Uh, so... Um, my feeling is that Disney wanted to be uh, test the waters to take first. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but again, I might be totally wrong. It's just a feeling that I have the feeling that Ravens Ravensburger really believed in the game, and it makes no sense that they had uh, that wall print, and uh, that that's the only reason I could find for it that uh, there are external factors like Disney who already had developed many failed TCGs uh, trying to use the same IP. Yeah. And yeah. I think, I think right now though, um, as a, uh, as a seasoned card gamer, I think, uh, this game is in a really great spot, and and not not just because it's like I'm investing so much time on. Uh, well, the reason why is because I think that it's one of the best card games that that, that I've played. It it plays really great, and there's so much more room to it. You know, um, it the game has just started. It has a great foundation, and throughout the years, many more keywords and probably other mechanics will be introduced in the uh, into to the game. And uh, yeah, I I I can't wait because uh, right now we have cards like Hades, um, where it gives you it takes out the board. It, it, I mean, it takes out the card uh, away from the board. It's not banishing. It turns it's it turns it into an ink, but it says that it's exerted. And I'm like, why do we have to word it like exerted? Why does it matter? They're not gonna yeah. be using that, uh, anyways, until uh the next turn. So they're leaving that room in the middle that maybe someday, just like Runeterra, just like Magic, we sh we would be able to, an or or just like Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, we would be able to answer a play in in the middle of your opponent's turn, even if it's not your turn. If you have enough inks, you could trigger something. You know that's that, yep. that's a mechanic yep. that uh, I, I was thinking that maybe the the they're adding and, and and also I've mentioned this plenty of times uh, they they definitely have solved Magic's uh, problem when it comes to the 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 mana system. 
there, there, there is this uh, mana system that a lot of CCGs uh, take nowadays where every turn you gain one mana for sure. Yep. But uh, the, the lands, it could brick your hand in uh, MTG. Um, it could also, uh, what do you call this? Uh, you could also not get any lands and get a lot of yep. cards to the place and you can play it. And I think what they did with the inks, that was an amazing uh, idea. And I really, really hope that this game would keep uh, move it, moving uh, uh, forward into, you know, into where it's, yeah. it's heading right now, what it's doing. Um, all right. So now I, I think we covered a lot of like the, 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 the big stillborn, uh, questions, uh, Lur Lurkana questions as well. Um, we're going to try to get to know you a little bit more towards this, uh, and ending part of, uh, things. Um, will you be participating in the circuits when, when the circuit starts? Are you going to be going, I know you already go to the events, but will you be participating yeah. in the circuit when the circuit starts? Uh, well, it really depends on uh, on the dates and the places. Uh, I really wish to, but uh, for me, it involves traveling for at least three days, being away from my family for at least three days, uh, booking flights, hotels, and all those stuff. So it can get expensive as well. So it's not that easy for me. Uh, but at, my aim it is to participate in at least one event, uh, official OP event this year. And uh, for the World Championship, wherever that is, I will definitely be there, will do my best to be there, uh, because uh, it was hinted that there will be side events. I will most likely won't be able to qualify for the actual World Championships, uh, because I won't be able to play on the uh, OD OP events, but uh, for the side events and to meet all my friends <laughs> from the community, I'll be at the World Championship, wherever that is. Yeah, um, you say wherever that is, but we all know we want it to be in Disney yeah. World. So win or lose on side events, win or lose on the actual tournament. Yeah. We have Copium right behind her <laughs> we can ride our rides together have some food have some drink afterwards and yeah. have a good time <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah so, so it's I a win-win trip yeah the, yeah that'd be uh that would be awesome all right so we're gonna get into some segments here that i usually do with the the guests that uh, i i bring in sure. um these are uh timed segments so i will give you uh, the first one is called ban the cards segment so you have 10 seconds okay. to pick a card from a certain uh, ink that uh, I will mention. You don't have to explain it. You don't have to uh, uh, talk about it. We can discuss it right after the, 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 the segment. Um, but you just have to pick it and you have 10 seconds to do it. Sure. All right. Uh, are you ready? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right. So first one, 10 seconds. Amber, go. Um, Ario. Amethyst. 10 seconds, go. Goat. Emerald, go. Uh, Bibbidi-bobbidi-boop. Ruby, 10 seconds, go. Uh, Lady Tremaine. Oh, okay. Uh, Sapphire, go. Ooh, Hades. Steel. Um, yeah, a whole new world. All right. Okay, I was su surprised you picked re Lady Tremaine on Ruby. Uh, I, I was uh, moving my mouth already while, while, while you were thinking. I'm like, be prepared. <laughs> that's a pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty good answer. Um, that's a that's uh, the first time I heard about like uh, Ariel. I think I think yeah. Um, it, it, for me, it's tough to to pick with Amber. I, it's probably Rapunzel for me if I pick uh, uh, Amber. Why Ariel well, though? Well. If the goal of the ban list is to um, shake up the meta and uh, enforce diff uh, players to think of different ideas and stuff like that. So for most of the current top Amber decks, Ario is almost out to include and is critical part of your build up, your line of play, especially for Steel Song. So that can force you to think of other amber combinations so that's why i picked ariel i like that i like that amethyst i think we all know why we picked goat 
<laughs> and uh... I, I mean, I've lost so many games for top decking goat, and I really hate that card. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I feel you. So I, I myself am guilty guilty of uh, playing a lot of uh, bounce lately. So I usually. Um, in in, in uh, my Twitter, at least, I usually would post decks that are fun to play. Um, decks that are not meta. But I am guilty that the past three weeks of my life I have been playing Bounds uh, Control. And that's because I was joining Thea's uh, tournament. And I wanted I wanted to win. I wanted to win. Because like, the thing is, like I'm an aggro player. And no one respects yeah. me because I play aggro. And uh, you know, and it's just like that on every card game. Yeah, we, yeah. we we all agree. We we are the brainless players. Uh, and I'm like, look, I'm not brainless. I want to show you. I'm gonna play control. I'm gonna sell my soul to the devil, <laughs> and make people miserable. And I have accomplished that. Uh, I mean, I didn't make it top eight, but top twenty four on the first one, and then top twelve yeah. on the second one. I think. That I, I have, Pretty good. I have yeah. proven my uh, things. Seven two usually would make it on 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 the top, but like there's just so many people and so many great players that seven yeah. two there was like what like fifteen of us that didn't make it to yeah. to a uh, top eight. But yeah, um, uh, and it's just so busted when you get ahead and then you start bouncing goat. And it's like, what are you? Yeah. What, what are you gonna do? You be prepared, me. What I still you? gain gain something from the goat, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all Absolutely. that. And for uh, for Emerald, I think that's the only thing that uh, I think uh, I I forgot that you you pick. Who who did you pick for Emerald? Oh, Bibidi Emerald... Bobby Dibu. Bibidi Bobby Dibu. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why. I because it sounds fun. I don't think anything from Emerald needs banning. Maybe it was for, but it's not that much played as well. Because. Yeah, Bibidi the Bobbidi Boo in the long run can cause some issues. Yeah. Uh, when we, especially now with the faster ramp that we we are getting for Sapphire and the chance to play higher costed characters, even even if just for to heal them, play Bibidi Bobbidi Boo to heal them, it's it's still good good or protect them for being attacked or trigger trigger their when enter effect. Yeah, I think it's pretty solid card that will get only better over time. Yeah, I, I agree. The last part that you said is what I was actually going to add on to it. The more sets, the more cards that we get, the more busted that card will get. Um, yeah. And for, for Ruby, Lady Tremaine over Be Prepared. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, well, I'm one of those people that uh, like resets in the in the games. Maybe not that drastic uh, resets, like maybe leave three characters on the board or something like that. But uh, resets are fine. They're uh, healthy for the game. But uh, in combination with Lady Tremaine, for example, on turn seven, after be prepared, what do you do? If you play two characters, you, your opponent might have another be prepared. If you play one character, he might have Lady Tremaine. And you don't have a right play in that situation and i yeah. hate that situation because it's yeah those two cards are usually played and you usually your opponent have them both on turn seven so yeah uh it's it's very um negative player experience at least for me to to figure out what to do in that situation yeah uh, I I I I agree. I think I think both cards deserve. Uh, um, they are both mentioned already uh, uh, on the band. I think they both uh, deserve that. I have no problem with the resets as well. I think um uh the be prepared is the the most fair uh, reset because it kills all of your stuff as well. Um, yeah. I like that. And that is one of the things that I don't like about uh, Grab Your Swords is that most card games would usually damage your characters for two as well. And Grab Your Swords yeah. can be sung. And at the same... Yeah, because yeah, th that's that's the thing about uh, Lurkana, right? Is that you can play these cards technically for free if you have a character that, that could sing that. And yeah. with the combination of cards like... Um, Gaston and Ariel, it just makes it even even more busted. Um, but yeah, uh, I I think that was a that was a great explanation and an answer uh, for Sapphire Hades. Um, I I guess other than Hades, like there's not really like other like scary cards, yeah. right? 
No, I don't think so. Nothing. Well, you can you can ban uh, like uh, some stuff, but they will damage too much the identity. Uh, like yeah. uh, it get out of my, out of my head the item that you can put um, popsicles or no, quill. The, Fish quill. quill. Yeah. yeah, fishbone quill. You can ban that, and this it it will force players to think of different uh, decks, but it it's damaging too much the the identity of the color. Yeah. So I think that's one of the main things that ban lists are aiming to do is to remove a card without uh, damaging too much the identity of that color. Yeah. So, yeah. I totally agree. I totally agree. And still, I think we don't have to explain this one uh, anymore. Yeah. A whole new world. It's just it's a whole new world. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it. Especially when you can sing it. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, th that like cards like this are okay in other card games, but the fact that you can sing a whole new world that changes the whole thing. In my yeah, uh, opinion, because I play Pokemon I and they have these cards, and that's okay. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, when you have a character that can sing it for free, that's a whole different story. It just gets you so much advantage right off the bat. You can literally, if your opponent skips turn one and you go into turn two, and you already had the queen set up, you 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 shift into yeah. queen and a whole new world. Ultra Megatonic advantage right off the bat. And uh, and yeah, what effort absolutely. and what thinking did you do to to do that? To deserve that, right? Nothing. <laughs> it was just all yeah. uh, luck of the draw. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Um, the, the the this this would probably be our our last uh, segment uh, of, of of the day, and it's uh, this uh, it, this one has ten seconds to answer as well, and we're gonna do okay. the favorite uh, segment. So um, there's only five questions on this uh, one, and the first one is. What's your favorite character card to play? Favorite character? Uh, Flynn Rider, the evasive one, uh, the shiftable one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that is, that is pretty fun. I do like that as well. Um, favorite character art? Oh, Honey Wizard. I'm like, no doubt there. It's on, on my wallpaper. I'm getting the pin. It's that's. For me, it's the art of Warcana, the best possible art. It's yeah. amazing. I totally agree. It, it has identity. It has identity. It's not just something taken like a storyborn character from the uh, from some scene in a movie, or at least I haven't seen that scene uh, for uh, uh, Winnie the Pooh. So yeah, that's my favorite art by far. Yeah. I 100% I agree with that. The first time I saw that, um, I'm like, what is it going to do? And I'm really sad that it's not, a, um, I wouldn't say not playable, because um, like you, I still pick it on draft. I play it on draft. Yeah. It's, a good, it's a good in draft. But um, in, in constructed, it's just it doesn't see play. And, and that saddens me that a cool looking card doesn't see um, play at all. Yeah. Um, all right. So favorite... This one, I have to take out uh, something before I ask. Uh, the next one is the favorite enchanted card to play. But you cannot pick the Stitch Rockstar that they just announced. Because everyone's just going to pick that. Like, Well, it's, <laughs> it's easy for me. It's Elsa. Elsa. Like, it was the uh, first enchanted that I uh, opened at Gen Con. And it was like... 10 minutes after the first Elza was opened, so I was 10 minutes late for the Enchanted Explorer. I don't know if you remember that part of Gen Con. So, yeah, and it's very kind of special to me, uh, and I love the art, and uh, yeah. That's awesome. I love that card. That's yeah. really cool that <laughs> your first experience, like um, Ultra Megatonic experience with, with uh, one of your first Ultra Megatonic experience with Lorcana yeah. is opening an Elsa uh, and, and yeah. Enchanted. That's like many people's I, chase. I, I want one. <laughs> yeah, I shouted so much. Like, <laughs> I'm not sure. 
<laughs> they could have thrown me out from the hotel. I shouted that much. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I, to be fair, I do the exact same thing on uh, my LGS. Yeah. Everyone literally looks at me, and e even when I just pull a legendary, because like I, I would usually like record myself, or even when I'm not recording myself, I like to like what what I call painting the the cards. It's like slowly just look at the symbol. And I'm like, yeah. oh, Ooh, that's, legendary. Yeah, that's a legendary. <laughs> and if it's an enchanted, I'm like, oh, look at this. And I show it to everyone. They're like, yeah. that's enchanted. That's enchanted. Yeah. <laughs> it's such an exciting, um, exciting uh, experience. And this is like what I was talking about uh, earlier that CCGs are missing. Like if I if I yeah. get that card in a CCG, I would be like, yes, like that's that's really cool. If I get that uh, card in real life, I, I'm just like. Let's freaking yeah. go! <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the n next one is your favorite song card. My favorite song card. Oh, uh, a whole new world. A whole new know. world. Okay. Yeah. People have a and love hate relationship with a whole new world. Yeah. Well, the art is great. It changes the game, and yeah, I. Uh, I love it, actually. Yeah, it's. I agree. I agree. Um, there's also something about steel cards that that I like when you add some colors to uh, steel cards. It just yeah. pops off. It look. It looks yeah. really. It, it looks really really nice. Um, next one is favorite um, item card. Favorite item, uh, flute, for sure. Okay. Well, the the thing is that uh, I gave up on uh, playing this set because i didn't like how things are going and then uh zifa introduced me to the flute song deck and uh that he made with gaston and i gave it a shot and uh it was immediate love for me i love the deck and that's what get me to play more during that set and uh yeah it's basically a whole new world and flutes and yeah other songs but yeah it's fun it's fun uh and that yeah. version of zephyr i believe um that's the exact one that uh zach uh uh brought into another 1k and i think he got first place with that very impressive um with yeah. that deck it's nice to see though um that even even though there's two ultra megatonic decks that are stapled on the the god tier in in uh, the meta. Yeah. That there are different versions of all of them. Whether it's five, ten cards, that's different. It's nice to see different yeah. variants uh, uh, yeah, of it. Um, yeah. So I think I think we basically covered everything. And and the last part, of course, before we we close in uh, the show. We cannot not talk about the new cards that that are coming, but we're gonna keep this short because there's a, a plenty of of uh, new cards uh, already. Is there any card that's that took your attention so far with 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 what 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 they have released? In, well, uh, I think everyone's attention is at uh, Ursula, so I think that's a game changer and Emerald being the underrepresented kind of uh, color, except for green FASA, that's a little bit on the rise. But apart from that, uh, not many uh, Emerald decks. Uh, so putting uh, Ursula there is a great, in great idea, great introduction to the game. And the effect is a deal breaker, game changer, exactly what uh, the current meta needs. So even if they, the next set even if it's just Ursula, it will completely change the game, I think. Yeah, so. I, I agree with that. I agree with that. The first time I saw it, it uh, I was so hyped because I wanted a silence mechanic. And, and it's not a complete yeah. like silence mechanic, yeah. but it is yeah. like preventing you from singing in a way, right? And, and I hope that they also introduce an action card that does what, what Ursula does. Yeah. Maybe a more expensive one like four mana action. Um, they uh, your opponent can sing, or an item that prevents your opponent from uh, uh, well, singing. Well, they usually do that for Emerald, so why not? Yeah. We we've already seen a couple of combos for Emerald where we have action and the character with the same effect. Yeah, 
I like that. I like I, I, I like that a lot. For me, um, I'm I'm looking at all the cards, and I I really really like um, obviously uh, Jim Hawkins is is the most exciting for for me right now. But uh, I am not excited with the current um, locations that's been released so far. Nothing is really like have blown my mind or taken my attention when it comes to to uh, locations. You think locations are are, are going to be great for set three? Uh, maybe not for set three, but for the next one. I think that they will keep the uh, vocation effects uh, relatively simple uh, and focus more on effects on characters or items that interact with vocations and keep them more complex. So people get used to play vocations and interact with them. Yeah. And then in future sets they will add uh, the complexity for vocations but that's my that's my feeling yeah basically basically just get, just uh test the waters uh with us uh, get us yeah. familiar you know don't overwhelm us with uh too much stuff um but uh, yeah i'm 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 so impatient that i want i want to <laughs> see all these like cards already 3 months back before lorcana my 3 months is like a blink of an eye when yeah. Lurkana started, my three months feels like six or like a whole year. I'm <laughs> like, why you got to slow this? I think it's a good thing, though, that it yeah. is uh, slowing time down for me. Because, like, um, I, 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 I feel like I'm getting old uh, so fast. Like, I, I got to <laughs> say, like, my last, like, seven, eight years of my life um, is just went by, went by like that. I got married, yeah. and, and it, it, it just... It just went by like that. We're having a good time, and that's probably why. But um, no game has slowed things down for me, except for Lorcana. And, and I'm glad that it, it's doing that. I'm glad that it's doing that. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, so that's basically it. Um, uh, uh, first of all, I want to thank you again for for coming into this uh show i really 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 appreciated it and i enjoyed our our, our conversation i hope none of the questions that i, I asked i try i, I tried to <coughs> sorry um I, I tried to um make it not non uh, oppressive or like make you feel oh. uncomfortable i hope that uh, yeah. it, it didn't make you feel like that at all um and and, and this is this is also like stuff that um not only I was uh, curious about, people are curious about this well, and it's it's really cool that you answered them. I was actually expecting for you not to answer uh, any of those. And Why not? I'm not hiding anything. Exactly. If I wanted to hide, like, I wouldn't show my face, I would have published Pixel Born with some unknown identity going through some servers in uh, third world countries and stuff like that, but yeah, I... Yeah. I, I like that, and I res I, I respect that a lot. And again, uh, thank you very much for for um, creating such an awesome tool for us to to test our our, our deck and uh, all those stuff. Um, I, I I'm gonna have uh, all your links uh, down below, so people make sure to uh, check out uh, Pavel's uh, social link. Is there anything else you wanted to add or say, uh, Pavel? No, I really appreciate you inviting me and talking with me. It was a huge honor and pleasure. And uh, yeah, I, I was just thinking about that. We are two non-native uh, English speakers speaking in English, uh, making a podcast in English, which was <laughs> fun. You, you, at one point, you can start talking in uh, your native language. I can start talking in Bulgarian. And <laughs> it's really yeah, and uh, I'll just I'll just hire someone to uh, put the uh, the <laughs> yeah. subtitles uh, down below. <laughs> yeah, 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 that'd be awesome. Uh, All right. Well, um, uh, was that it? Um, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, Everyone, I hope uh, everyone that is doing great, that they enjoy Workana, that they continue the support for the game. Uh, if not, take a break, try different things, come back in a month or two and try the new set when it comes out or whatever. Just cherish yourself and what you have. Try to be happy and stay healthy. I like that. 
I like that. And, and um, don't always play Pixar, Pixel Born. Play some real, uh, real life Lorcana Absolutely. as well, because you need to get out of the house. And I mean yeah. that in a good way, because you, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna go cuckoo if you just uh, <laughs> sit there. Even Favela agrees yeah. with me. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Don't play Pixel Born. Too many games. <laughs> no, you play it, but don't just uh, play Lorcana there the whole time, because yeah. you, you need to touch grass you need to touch <laughs> some grass <laughs> all right well yeah. um thank you very much uh, everyone for checking out this uh podcast i appreciate you all i hope that you guys enjoyed this conversation as much as i did uh with pavel and i'll see you guys on the next episode peace out